Now that we have built a simple OSGI service and client, let's use Java EE technology to build a enterprise application. As you know, a typical enterprise application using web facing front end. So we're going to build a web application that is also going to be an OSGI bundle. We call such applications as hybrid applications. So let's go to NetBeans and build our hybrid application. In NetBeans, I'm going to select a new project, Maven, Maven web application. Click on next. Name the project as simple web client. The project location is same as the parent palm. Give the project as impl because nothing from this project needs to be exported. Click on finish. NetBeans do all the hard work for us for creating the template project and all the required files. Once the project is created, I expand the source packages, right click on the package, say new and add a new Java class. Call this class as service locator. This class is similar to the one that we created in the client package earlier and click on finish. And I'm going to use a code template here. And let me resolve the imports first. Or actually resolve the Maven dependencies. And bundle context comes from org OSGI core. And we pick org OSGI core version 4.2.0. And finally, service tracker comes from our GoSGI compendium package. So we pick that and click on add. Once all the Maven dependencies has been resolved, we can fix all the imports easily and the file will now compile successfully. Now let me add a couple of servlet classes here, one for login and one for registration, which are going to be the backend servlets for doing all the business logic. So right click in the package, say new servlet, call it login servlet, click on next, change the URL pattern to login and click on finish. Now we're using Java E6 over here, so all the uh, metadata about the servlet can be specified in the annotation uh, at web servlet annotation itself. Let me use a code template to generate my logic here. First thing first, resolve the imports and then everything is good over here. So in login servlet I'm using service locator and I'm giving minus one as the parameter that means keep waiting till this time service is available and in the meanwhile, if somebody tries to access the service, we can easily display a user-friendly error message saying service is not available. Let me add a registration servlet here as well. Click on next and here change the pattern to register and click on finish. And I'm going to use a similar template here. Resolve the import, and as you can see, same thing here. You know, we are using get uh, from the locator. We're trying to get the user auth service, and trying to register. And if the service is not found, you know, a user-friendly error message is displayed. That basically shows the dynamism that is available in OSGI now accessible in Java EE web applications. So uh, now that the backend uh, logic is completed, let's add uh, a few web pages. So um, in the index.jsp. I'm going to um, add user code template um, and this basically uh, just displays a simple HTML message you know directs you to either login or registration depending upon what your requirements are. So now let's create login.jsp and registration.jsp. So right click here, create a new JSP page here, call it login.jsp, click on finish. And in the login.jsp, I'm going to use a code template here. Um, displays a simple username password you know, in a form, and the action is login, which basically goes back to our login servlet. 
and let me add a registration JSP here as well. Click on finish and this is my registration JSP. Let me use a code template here too. And this is very simple. In this case, the action is register. So user can log in or user can register first and then can log in. Now, the only thing I need to do over here is add a osgi.properties file. Um, in my osgi.properties file, I'm going to let me create it first. So this is my osgi.properties file. If you remember, this file is going to be used by the Maven bundle plugin to generate our manifest information. And in here, I got a code template as well. All I'm specifying is a web context path. This is a standard manifest header. And I'm saying this OSGI bundle is going to be accessible at this context route. So um, we have created all the required files. Let's save them. And now all the files are saved. Let's right click and build this project. Now the project has successfully built, let's look at the generated manifest information. Go to files. Simple web client, target. Notice this is a war file, which is also an OSGI bundle. So I go to my metainf, look at the manifest information over here. As you can see, um, again by following the conventions, the, this is the bundle class path is automatically set to webinf slash classes because by default none of the classes are available in the class path. So this is uh, set in the bundle class path. If we go down here, we can see the uh, web context path, which is what we specified in our osgi.properties file is automatically added here too. And finally, the Maven bundle plugin went through the list of the classes that, that are actually being used in this application and automatically added them to the import package. Now that Maven has built our service, our or actually client, let's deploy it. So in here, Maven automatically built the client bundle and it registered it in the repository. So in our OSGI administration console, let's refresh the repository here, search again on the HOL metadata and you can see automatically that the simple web client that Sahu just built is now automatically available for us over here. So I expand this, I click on the version over here, and again, I uh, click on the deploy and start, which is going to deploy this OSGI bundle and start it for us as well. And then if I search on OSGI again, or HOL again, you can see that the bundle is automatically installed and started as it's visible over here. So now let's go to a URL where this bundle is deployed. If you recollect, during the project creation in the osgi.properties file, we specified a context route. So we're going to go to that context route and see how this, this uh, client bundle can be easily accessed. So let's go to this URL and simple web client. And you see that the index.jsp page that I added over there is now available over here. I can click on login. And if you recall, we had certain uh, user IDs and passwords pre-registered. So I'm going to say, Oracle and I'm going to say fusion and I click on login it says welcome Oracle very simple very clean interface you are more than free to use any of the Java e 6 or fancy technologies to use it um, and then I can go back to the main page let me go to actually OSGI console for a second I go to bundles and I search on HOL again here apply the filter and I can see my simple service is already running over here and I can just click on this button, which will actually stop this service. So I stop the service over here. I can go back to my um, simple web client. The client and the service are completely decoupled from each other. Now if I click on register over here, I try to give it a name and a password, and I click on register. And now we dynamically see that the service is not available. Now this is because we already stopped the service.